Launched in 1971, UNESCO's Man and the Biosphere Program is an intergovernmental scientific program that aims to establish a scientific basis for the improvement of relationships between people and their environments. It proposes interdisciplinary research, demonstration and training in natural resources management. In 1998, UNESCO declared the Kogelberg Biosphere Reserve as South Africa's first biosphere. The region was also the sixth South African site to be inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Situated in the Cape Floral Kingdom, it cuts across spectacular mountain and ocean scenery, containing some of the richest plant biodiversity in the world. UNESCO's World Heritage Committee declared the 553,000 hectare Cape Floral Kingdom to be of outstanding universal significance to humanity describing it as one of the richest areas for plants in the world. The Kogelberg Biosphere Reserve is managed by a board of volunteering directors. Chairman of the board, Johan West, explains. What you see behind me is part of the magnificent Kogelberg Biosphere. More than 3,500 marine species are endemic to this area. This is truly one of the world's most diverse biodiversity hotspots. It is our duty to preserve this beautiful heritage, not only for South Africa, but for the rest of the world. This beautiful area is also inhabited by people that's been here for many, many years. People that also come from disadvantaged backgrounds, it's, it's very difficult to teach people about conservation on an empty stomach. It is therefore for us as board members very important to focus on social upliftment and environmental education. Although this is a UNESCO designated biosphere, we do not receive any funding from UNESCO. We receive funding from province and from local authorities. However, we call on you to spread the word of all the goodwill that's happening in this part of Africa so that it can open doors for us, doors for funding and for human resources to assist us. We need you and the people of the Kogelberg need you. A biosphere reserve, particularly one incorporated under the auspices of UNESCO, should be a model of sustainable living. Sustainable living in the context of a marine environment means leaving sufficient organisms in the sea to reproduce at the rate that can be extracted on a continuous basis. What this means is that the coastline should be clearly demarcated into closed and open areas occupying not more than 85% of the coastline. We do have marine protected areas around our coast, but they certainly do not reach the 15% of the coastline that is required. The problem is that they are not sufficiently protected. Examples abound of continuous poaching of abalone and crayfish in protected and specifically designated areas. And until we have the political will and the compliance structures in place to ensure sustainability of our coastline. We will continue on a path of destruction from which ultimately there is no return. If I may quote Sylvia Earle who says that we have taken, no, we've eaten 90% of the big fish in the sea and that if we allow the sea to be destroyed it will be a case of no blue, no green and the land will suffer. Members of our Biosphere Reserve should do everything in their power to ensure that the sea is protected. We have one of the most viable coastlines around the southern tip of Africa and to see it being destroyed on a daily basis removes much of the pleasure from living in this area. 
The problem is that most people do not see the destruction because it is underwater. With rhinos, people see the dead rhinos, but only the shells that wash up on the ditch speak of the destruction where the abalone have been removed. The problem is that targeting any one species in an environment of this nature adds to the destruction of many other species associated with it. I've been living in this part of the world and associated with it for over 50 years and it really hurts to see it being neglected and no effort being made to keep it safe. We're standing here in a very, in a very good example of an apple orchard uh, in the Biosphere Reserve, the Kochberg Biosphere Reserve. Um, apple farming is a long-term is a long-term operation. Uh, sustainability is absolutely crucial. You're looking at investments for uh, 30 plus years in whatever you put in, and it's absolutely crucial that the farmers uh, have an environment where uh, the sustainability is maintained. The crucial aspect of this fruit industry is the water that's used. The water in the Palmit River is the artery essentially for the whole um, biosphere reserve. The Palmit River itself uh, is still uh, comparatively unexploited, uh, caught it just in time and um, we, it's being very responsibly managed and uh, um, the actual quality of water in the fruit in the Palmit River in actual fact improves as it goes down the uh, valley. The biggest challenges that we have really in terms of the environment here and in terms of the Biosphere Reserve in this part is in fact the impact of uh, hum humans on the, whole, uh, on the whole biosphere. The area is very close to Cape Town and as such um, is a natural green lung uh, for people living in Cape Town. And there's been a tremendous move now towards building up um, sort of ecotourism, nature tourism um, in this area. Uh, all of this uh, takes um, wonderful exposure for the, in fact, the biodiversity that we see now up on our mountains, which are all on the sort of Table Mountain sandstone. And um, the natural feinbos there um, is absolutely stunning, and in most cases, um, it's very well managed. Um, the important thing over time is, in fact, to make progress, and uh, we are making progress, slow at times, in cleaning up the aliens, which are a, a major of a major threat to the actual indigenous uh, biodiversity here. I call upon all farmers, farm workers and people living in this area, not just necessarily in the fruit industry, to respect the principles of the Biosphere Reserve, which will sustain us over the long term.